Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name's Jay. Welcome back to another episode of my Turbo Mustang project. We're finally getting somewhere. The Mustang Run! Here we are, a couple of weeks older, a couple of weeks wiser. And uh, let me show you what I've been up to. So, in the last episode, at least I think that's how it was, we got the turbo mounted. There was this ingenious plan to make the exhaust go round here, round here, and down the back of the engine. And I did make that pipe, and then it kept me up all night and I hated it. So I came in in the morning and chopped it up. Um, and now, this is my exhaust. I mean, I'm very sorry to have to have done this, or, you know, I say have to have done this. I'm very sorry to have done this because Looks wise, I think it's disgusting, but it saved so many other problems that um, in the end, I just went for it. You know, I'm not gonna set fire to any of the coils, any of the plug leads, any of the spark plugs. I'm not gonna have an exhaust resting on the car body down the back. Um, I haven't got to spend probably five or 600 quid on boxes and pipe to get the exhaust to the back of the car. So, yeah, as much as it sort of upsets me to have it there, it's, it is how it is for now anyway. I thought, um, I genuinely thought me and Craig had fallen out about it. He shouted at me like a naughty schoolboy and told me he was having nothing to do with it, so I had to get Colm to weld this up for me, so. <laughs> anyway, in other news, uh, intercooler pipes are now done, and uh, barring heat shielding anyway, clearing the exhaust. Uh, the last piece of pipe is on Craig's welding bench, waiting for him to weld that up. So today, we're gonna figure out how to relocate the ABS pump, which was here, and now it's gonna go somewhere here. Uh, those fuses are going away anyway, they were from the old ECU. Um, and then we're gonna take everything out, ready to clean up the engine bay, and uh, yeah, prepare to run some new brake lines and put put the clutch on and put everything in for good. Can't wait. Well, that's that then. I'm gonna call that mocked up. ABS moved, quite simply. Where Just the uh, ABS used to be? Down there. Just further down, but which has now got the um, things in the way. The, uh, the exhaust that Craig loves so much <laughs> is right there, so. Yeah, had to move, and now it is moved, so yeah. Intercooler pipes are done. Craig's talking to me again and welding for me again, so I've got this pipe finished. Now it's time to remove everything that I've done. Mm -hmm. Clean up the engine bay and, uh, you know, put the last few bits on and put it in for good. So, are you gonna be so dangerous as to put a date on anything? No, because Mrs. goes back to work next Saturday and that means I lose basically all my time that I have to work on it, so. Yeah. Um, but I mean, as far as lockdowns go, you've done a pretty aggressive shift on this. I guess so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quite a lot of stuff been put in. You know, but there's still a bit more to go. Oh, I'll show you what, what else turned up today, actually. Because I wasn't feeling making the panel for the tunnel. Ah. I bought the kit from a manual car, so that'll be nice and easy to so it's a, the mess and it's a genuine Ford part. <laughs> yeah, genuine Mustang transmission cover made in Taiwan. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 genuine Ford. But you know, it'll cover up that um, animal gnawed out hole quite nicely that's there at the moment. So was that done by you? Uh, some of it was done by me, some of it was done by someone else. So did you use a bread knife or what kind of knife did you use? <laughs> <laughs> I used a Birmingham knife. <laughs> a nice crime knife. Yeah. So that'll be a good finish. So that's a cut out and weld in panel, yeah? Yeah, once the engine's out in a bit, I'll, you know, got a few other little bits and pieces to do. Catch you in a couple of days, I guess, when I've got an engine all over the floor and car in pieces and hopefully an engine bay, rail can black. Cool. Yeah. So, oh, horse has gone get it. <laughs> He's dying to rip his tail off on my trousers. Did you, did you not have a... Uh... Oh yeah, I guess that's a real like <laughs> awkward bit to have there. Yeah. You've got the Cobra one as well, don't you? Or did you had the Cobra? I had that, but then I learned it was exactly the same as having an M badge on your 316. Oh, okay. So Cobra had to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
you have to bear with me here. It's been about three weeks, I think, since I last picked up a camera um, and talked about Mustang stuff because I bought that horror of a Renault and uh, it's been trying to uh, sap my enthusiasm, shall we say, for cars, but I got the car stripped. Um, it has now unfortunately been pushed into the corner um, with Starkies because of something I'm going to tell you about now. So, my exhaust has been keeping me up at night. Um, not the wastegate position because I'd really like to prove you lot wrong on that. Um, but the fact that it came out of the bumper, it's making me not really want to drive the car. So, um, last week or the week before, happened to be watching uh, John Dock on YouTube, I think LS Nasty channel I believe he's called, and he bought a, a LS powered SN95 like this, which managed to have a 4 inch exhaust running front to back. Um, it wasn't that clear in the video, but a bit of fast forwarding, rewinding, fast forwarding, rewinding later, um, the car's got a tubular cross member on it. Cross member, this is England, we're not going to pretend to be Americans. Um, K member if you're over there I believe. But um, yeah, basically I've ordered one. So in probably two weeks, I guess, we're dealing with eBay shipping. I'm gonna have that, um, I can smash that in and uh, get on with this thing. So I guess I'll speak to you again in another two weeks. Well, finally back. It's been a while since I last spoke to this thing about a Mustang. Uh, probably about a month since I recorded the last bit and two months since I last touched the car, but we have a shiny cross member, or a shiny tubular cross member, um, which has now turned up. It's been here about three weeks, it's just that um, fighting Renaults has taken up every spare minute that I've got. But hopefully I've got two running Renaults now and I'm going to get back onto this. Um, yeah, as I was, oh, I don't even know what I last filmed, it's been so long. Let me just put the brew down. As I was talking about, or thinking about when I ordered this thing, um, it gives a lot more room in this area for exhaust. Whereas you can see the factory one there is um, boxed in. This one is not. Um, so there's two thoughts at the moment. The exhaust is still gonna go down low because I like the way that looks. Um, it'll either come around the front there, loop around there, twist through that hole and go to the back of the car where it belongs or we'll chop this mount off here um, it'll run around there and then I'll refigure out this engine mount later on but uh, for now or for today anyway it's time to finish welding in the uh, if I can get in there the new uh, manual transmission lump that needs to be finished off um, and then oh, Finish prepping the floor, ready for paint. Because um, once that's done, I can get on with, you know, making brake lines, put the engine in for good. So that's what I'm going to get on with. Sorry, I think I just said transmission. I meant gearbox. There we go. That's the cut line marked out. Basically, just measured. Well, drew round the uh, lump on the tunnel, and then just measured that lip there, and uh, yeah, marked out like that. Oh, those sporty brakes sound like Craig's coming, which means I can go and get the air source, so that's good timing. Um, yeah, I'm just going to cut this section out, um, clean up, it's pretty dark, but clean up this cut up here and just make it as high as I can in the front because there's no reason to um, uh, cripple myself and make it, uh, you know, make it harder than it needs to be to fit the gearbox in. So let me cut this out and uh, we'll drill some holes and uh, put or weld him in. One of the most frustrating tools in the world. Before you know it all, say you should oil the uh, saw. I've done it about four times. It's just an annoying tool. Well, still got to tidy up the edges, but it seems to. 
you know, just sliding lovely now. So it's tidy up the edges, draw some holes for welding and weldering. Well, that's got the edges of this cleaned up. Um, just a quick quote of a uh, quick coat even of weld through primer um, to uh, get in between the seams and we'll uh, clean up the bit in the car. There we go, prepped. Let's go get the weld around. Just whiz a grinder over it. That is it, unfinished. Came out pretty tidy for me. Um, just gonna clean off these welds a tiny bit and then run a bead of um, seam sealer all the way around the seam to seal it. But that's come out quite good. I'm trusting Nate at the top to say that it looks all right. So, cool beans. Where's your face, Nate? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what we do in our spare time? What you do when you're... Oh, it's school holidays? Yeah. Cool. That's the bottom done. Time to move on to the top and see if that needs tidying up or if I can live with it how it is. Well, it looks pretty respectable on this side, but I'm going to put a... Um, just a run of sealant around it anyway, just to finish it off. Because, you know, I've gone to this much trouble. Let's make it as nice as I can. I'm calling that done. Let's have a little Monday night update on the Mustang. Um, it's getting quite late now. It's getting dark outside and I've, I'm pretty hungry and I want to go home. But let me show you what I've been up to for the last week or so since I finished that, um, since I finished the tunnel. So, um, brushed off the front of the car um, and that's had a couple of coats of Pour 15 now and has been primed since. Um, anywhere where it was you know exposed metal basically or you know starting to show its age has been brushed off and is now pour 15 and primed um so that's the coating i've chosen for the floor because well i like it i've used it before and it worked so yeah anywhere you know edges and stuff like that is now ready for a coat of bed liner over the top um what else have i done i have Tonight, I've been removing the lower arms. They're disgusting. Um, and they're gonna go for powder coating. Basically, one of the ball joints was hanging um, on the other side, so ordered a pair of ball joints. Looked at getting a set of arms over, but by the time they're here, they're sort of so expensive that it's not worth it. You know, talking 350 quid or something for a pair. Um, I would have liked to have ordered um, an angle kit, a drift angle kit. Uh, just in case I get into trouble I can get myself out of trouble or whatever but at the moment I really don't have the money so we're gonna get the car working first and that's something I'm gonna look at in future um, seeing a couple of nice kits um, that they do that people make in America I can't think of the name of of the one I actually like it's a something fab mantis kit but yeah it looks awesome but it's also eighteen hundred dollars which I can't really justify right now the Bilstein uh, suspension that's on it at the moment has seen better days. Um, I just discovered that this spring's broken and for my exhaust idea to work, I think we're gonna have to convert to full coilover anyway. So um, I'm gonna try if I can find something with the correct bolt spacing to make a set of HSDs up um, to fit this. That seems like the most sensible thing to do in this building. Um, that's not a job for tonight though, so 
Yeah, my next job is to prep and paint the engine bay and then we can finally start putting this thing back together for good. Well, hopefully that's been a nice episode. Um, don't really know where we started on this. It's been months since I started filming it. We're talking, we're in September now and I started taking the engine out in June. So yeah, it's been a while, but hopefully uh, it'll make some sense and I'm back on it now, not fighting Renault. So till next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe, be kind, all the good stuff, YouTube, this, that, the other night. At Driftworks, we've helped over 50,000 happy customers since 2004. Our huge online parts store is simple to use, with superb shipping rates to anywhere in the world, and finance options available for UK customers. We live and breathe wheel fitment, so if you have any questions about your own car or any of our products before placing an order, please drop us an email at shop at driftworks.com or give us a call. Thanks for watching.